Concept 6a, Transformations of Quadratic Functions. In this concept, we're going to revisit something that you learned in Unit 1, Concept 2, General Transformations. We're going to revisit those certain values that you can put in an equation, the a, h, and k values that will transform or shift the function. So first, let's get down some vocabulary definitions and formulas. So a quadratic Quadratic functions is a function with a U-shaped graph, a smooth U-shaped graph, and that shape is called a parabola. The parent equation form, which is the most basic form of that function, is simply y equals x squared, where x is your input and y is your output. <clears throat> now, a quadratic function can be in what's called vertex form. And a quadratic function in that form has this general equation pattern, y equals, and there are those parameters a, h, and k. Those are constants, numbers, that can be introduced into that simple parent equation. And I just changed those to red. And so those um, letters in red are actually going to be numbers in your equation, and we call those constants. the vertex of a parabola will be either a minimum or a maximum point. So if the U shape opens up, then the vertex is at the very base of it and it's a minimum. If the parabola, the U shape opens down, then the vertex is at the very top, it's a maximum. And then we're gonna talk about transformations. <clears throat> and in um, specifically, in this section, we're gonna talk about translations, which is a shift of a graph horizontally or vertic vertically. So we're going to take that U shape graph and just shift it left, right, or up or down. There will be no change in shape, so it will not get skinnier or more wider, and no um, change in orientation. So now let's graph some of these quadratic equations. And let's start with the parent function. So f of x equals x squared. In your table, write it as y equals x squared. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick out the h and the k value. And we notice there are no numbers by the x squared. Um, and so that means our h value is zero and our k value is zero. The vertex um, in a quadratic function, the x and the y values are the h and the k values. So right away we know the vertex or the highest or the lowest point will be zero, zero, and that's where we start. So I'm gonna place that in the middle of our table. And then I'm going to put in x values, two that are um, in the negative direction and two in the positive direction, so that our x values are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now the way that I got the y values is then I just did the math. So the equation says to square the x value. When you square negative 2, you get 4. When you square negative 1, you get 1, and so on. So now let's graph that. Draw your x, y axes label that and the scale, and then plot those points. So we have the point negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And then create that nice smooth U-shaped curve through those points. So that is a picture, a graph, of the parent function of a quadratic. Now let's graph the function f of x equals x minus 2 quantity squared. Now you'll know that that's an h value from concept two and that's gonna shift it to the right. But first of all, let's pick out our h and our k. So our h value is the opposite of what we see, so it's positive two, and our k value, since there's no number at the end of the equation, is two and zero. Then we put in x values that are two in the negative direction and then two steps in the positive direction. And then we place those x values into the equation for x to get our y value. So 0 minus 2 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, and so on. And now let's plot those points. I'm plotting them in red, and you can see that parabola is the exact same shape. It's oriented the exact same way, but it has just shifted horizontally to, to the right. So to describe that transformation, we say it is a translation, and we know it's shifting horizontally to, to the right. We'll also name the vertex, which we have done before, and that is the point two zero. And in this case, our vertex is a minimum 
because it is the lowest point in that U-shaped curve. Now look at this function. We have f of x equals x plus 2 quantity squared. From concept 2, you know that this is going to shift this graph 2 to the left. So it says describe the transformation and identify the vertex. We'll do that at the end. First, though, we're going to graph the parent function and then this new transformed function. So our parent is y equals x squared. I'm just making a table starting with the vertex at 0, 0 putting in values that are two in the negative direction and two steps in the positive direction, plugging those numbers in, getting the y values. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in values for my transformed function. So remember our h value is always the opposite of what we see. So it's negative two, and then our k value is zero because there's nothing at the end of that equation, no number <clears throat> besides zero. So we place that in the middle we put in our numbers two steps in the negative positive direction, plug them into the equation to get our y values. And now let's graph these together. So first I'm going to graph my parent function like I did before. And now in red, I'm going to graph my transform function. And you can see once again what we have is we have a translation. It's horizontal shift to the left, two. We don't have a change in shape or orientation. And then let's name that vertex, negative two, zero. Now we're gonna make some generalizations about horizontal translations. So from that quadratic equation in that general form there, you see, if you see that h is being subtracted, the graph is gonna to shift to the right. If you see that h is being added, the graph will shift to the left. And then the vertex, you can always pick it out of the equation, is at the point hk, where h is your x value and k is your y value. Now let's look at what happens when we have an equation like this, f of x equals x squared plus 3. Notice the plus 3 is not in a parentheses by the x before it's being squared. It is at the end. So values at the end of an equation are k values. So you know from concept 2 that this graph is going to shift up. So let's start with that parent function, y equals x squared. You should be getting good at this now. Here are our values. So the vertex is at 0, 0, and then plot the points negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and the other two. Nice smooth curve. Now place your equation in the other table, and let's pick out the h and the k value. Since there's nothing being added or subtracted in a parentheses by the x, that means our h value is 0, and our k value is just as we see it, positive 3. So in our table, we're going to start with 0, 3, and we're going to step <clears throat> in the negative direction two steps and in the positive. Now I have shown my work plugging in negative 2 into the equation. So I have to square negative 2 first, so that becomes 4, and then 4 plus 3 is 7. And then I square negative 1, which is positive 1, plus 3 is 4, and so on. So that is how I get my y values. Now I'm going to plot these, and I should see a U-shaped curve that has been shifted up 3. And that's what I see. So it hasn't changed shape or orientation. This translation, sorry, transformation, is also called a translation vertically, and we describe it as 3 up. It's a vertical translation, and let's just name that vertex again, 0, 3. And I know you're thinking it, but this vertex is a minimum because it is the lowest point on the U-shape of the graph. Now, I also want to help you draw the conclusion that if you have a k value that's being subtracted, you're going to have a translation shifting down. It will still be a vertical translation, but it will be down. So if a k value is added, it's going to shift up and subtract it. It's going to shift down. So let's go ahead and make those um, generalizations here, the takeaways. So if you see a k value being added, it's going to shift our graph up. And if you see a k value being subtracted, it's going to shift the graph down. And my k's, I use cursive k's. Now I want you to pause the video and do the independent practice. So first you're going to um, graph the parent function, uh, y equals x squared. Then you're going to graph um, the new function. So notice that we have an h and a k value that's other than zero. 
So x plus 3 quantity squared. So our h value is negative 3, and our k value is negative 2. So that's your vertex. So that's where I need you to start your table. Also, anticipate the shifting that's going to happen. So since you have plus 3, it's going to shift to the left 3, and minus 2, it's going to shift down 2. So pause and graph, and then come back and check your work. Okay, now you can see I've started the problem for you. I have picked out h and k, identified the vertex, put that in my table, and then plugged in those x values in the negative and positive direction. I have also shown the work for plugging in negative 5 for x. So when I do that, I'm going to get 2, and then so on, plugging in those values, I get negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, and 2 for my y values. Now I'm going to graph that and I'm graphing carefully, so I'm going over negative five and up two, and then notice I have a parabola that has shifted three to the left and two down. Now I failed to graph the parent function, but hopefully you did, and you can see it right there centered on our origin, zero, zero. And finally, let's name that vertex again, so it's at negative three, negative two. All right, this concludes um, the notes on the concept 6a, which is just horizontal and vertical translations with a quadratic function.